Okay, so I think I am live. No. Hello, everybody. Welcome to StarNet Link. Um, today, I thought I would go ahead and do a movie review. Um, I thought it would be kind of good to like do this type of movie review and explain how it kind of connects to my space school series and also to discuss different concepts of the movie based on my own personal experiences with different ET encounters as well as the SSP encounters that I've had. Um, but before we begin, I thought I will go ahead and do some announcements. Um, for people who are new to my channel, um, my YouTube channel is called StarNet Link. I educate people who are beginners or people who are just interested in this type of topic. Um, I do also want to let people know that I am in the process of writing a book that is de dedicated to my YouTube series of Space School. Uh, I sh sh in the process right now of writing it and editing it as well. Um, I also do want to let people know that if you want to see me in person, um, I should be down in Florida in July for the conference of this closure conference, which should be there should be a link on Facebook or I'll put a link to the disclosure conference in the um, chat room after this live stream. But um, I also want to let people know that I do offer my services. Um, I do galactic readings, um, origin readings. Um, I do readings for people who want a reading done. Um, the really good thing is, is that I have been moving into my house and unpacking some stuff and I have found my certificate for being a Reiki master, which I thought I lost, but haven't, but I have found it. So now that I have found my Reiki master certificate, which is like right here, um, I can now start offering energy work for people who want energy work as well as galactic reading. And due to the fact that energy work takes a lot out of me, I was going to charge $200 a day for doing Reiki on people or doing energy work for people. Um, but, but I'm kind of excited that I actually found it. Um, for today, um, getting into the presentation of movie review. So I thought I would go ahead and explain how I'm going to do this movie review. So I ended up taking screenshots of the movie from Google and putting them in a slide. I don't actually have the actual video clips of the movie because I don't want a copyright strike on my YouTube channel or my YouTube videos. So I should be just doing a little presentation and talking about it, but I thought it would be really interesting and really good to like just talk about it, have a good time with people who are interested in hearing these topics and try to have a more visual understanding of some of my content for people who want to learn a little bit more in depth about stuff. So if you have any questions or if I leave anything out, leave a comment below and I'll love to have a discussion in the video. I have figured out how to do a presentation for StreamYard, which I'm really excited. So I thought we will go ahead and have some fun. Um, also, I do wanna let people know that if you wanna donate to my YouTube channel or help me out, um, the donation links are in the video description below as well as in my previous video and also in my YouTube live stream, if you want a um, want to donate or help me out. So any further ado, I thought I will go ahead and let people know that when I'm gonna do this movie review, I am going to give out spoilers. So if you don't want to, if you haven't watched the movie, I will be giving out spoilers. If you don't like that, um, I recommend going and watching some of my other videos until you watch the movie and watch this movie review. But I just hope that we will have some fun discussing and talking about this. So 
for people who don't know, um, it's Valerian, the city of a thousand planets. This is the movie poster. Um, this is what the movie poster looks like if you want to go and watch it and view it. If it interests you, this movie did come out in 2017. So it's probably about seven, seven years old now. This movie is about seven years old. So, so it's a little bit older movie, but I think that it's a little bit unappreciated. I know that some people may not like it because it's a cheesy rom-com science science fiction movie, but I really liked it. I know that other people liked it because of the aliens and the space theme around it, but I thought I would go ahead and um, explain a little bit more deeper concept of it. I'm not really going to like talk about the overall movie concept of it, but I'm going to explain different elements in the movie that kind of connect to my space school lessons. So in the beginning of the movie, um, they do an introduction where the human race has evolved to the point of creating a futuristic or a space station above Earth to the point where a lot of different ET races want to emerge and be part of the space stations to build their new home or habitat that they live in. Um, this is actually very common, especially amongst hitchhiker races that kind of like dissimulate away from their race or they're just hitchhikers, like they just want to explore the advancements of space. There are races out there that do this. And what is really interesting is that in the movie, because this is really real, they do not like talking to military officers or interacting with them. But this movie did a perfect display of aliens introducing themselves to Earth astronauts or explorers. And this is something that a lot of ETs would do to introduce them to explorers or people like this in general, because it's a non confrontal way and everything. And you'll notice that a lot of them come in like their original form or come in a spacesuit. Um, there were some of the beings in the introduction video where they were wearing spacesuits and they were trying to simulate a handshake. This is very similar where if a ET race wants to merge together on a base, they will typically want to understand the culture of what they're getting into. So as this would be like a formal greeting, if it was a different race, they would do a different meeting. But due to the fact that these ETs want to be part of this human base, they will probably follow and dictate the laws of the humans that run this spaceship. And so it's kind of really interesting. Would this happen in the future? Yes, probably. And I also have heard that as this has happened in the SSP. But um, this is very accurate. I do know that the ones that were wearing spacesuits in the beginning, so you'll notice that there are certain ones that wear spacesuits. I do believe that some of them were aquatic, but I also do believe that some of them are silicone in nature. Some of the life forms that they broadcast or show in the beginning of the movie are carbon-based life forms and the ones that wear spacesuits or need to wear spacesuits in order to interact with humans, those would be more of um, silicone-based life forms. So, so in the movie, you'll start to see, maybe I, there we go. So in the movie, you'll see that over time, they have built this gigantic space station of just a bunch of spaceports and stuff just floating through space. I do know in the beginning of the movie, um, it gotten so big that they were afraid the space station would crash into Earth. So they would have so they had other ET races help push it away from Earth and allow it to float through space. This is very common and it does happen quite frequently to the point where it doesn't 
to the point where it was just become this big clobberant of um, ships. This would be classified under the Galactic Consodium as a hitchhiker race, but due to the fact that so many races over the time have merged, it wouldn't be classified that as that. It would classify as a rogue spaceport because there is no like government structure. I do know in the movie that they were showing the little alien council that operates or run the base together in the movie and they were discussing issues that were happening on the base and stuff like missing components, missing stuff. But this is very rare. This is this is very common. It does happen a lot where you have a bunch of races just create a spaceport. So this is very common. So in the movie, um, you'll see that each different race has their own little area where they live and occupy and do work for the ship. Um, this ET race right here, the little robot, those are real, but they're not an actual race. They're a service, they're a service bot, and they usually work for other ETs, but they are real. Um, for people who have been watching my videos, will know that um, Bubble in the movie, who is a metamorph that can change her shape, um, those beings are really real. And this is the closest prediction that I have found about the Sovereign Chain Collective, or known as the Jelly Race. This is the closest representation of them in the movie, which I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, it kind of looks like Bubble might be a hybrid between Jelly and an Andromedan, which would probably explain a lot. It wouldn't surprise me that this would be a cousin race, but it but it is the closest prediction of the Jelly race that I have been talking about in my um, um, YouTube series. So in the beginning of the, the movie, um, they focus around a couple or a futuristic couple, which is these two right here. And um, they get tasked with trying to find a animal or a long lost animal that is used as a ener energy hub, but it was also... If you understand the movie that they want this animal because they were trying to cover up what happened in the movie, which I'll explain in the next slide. But in the movie, when they were tasked to find this creature or tasked to find this animal, you'll notice that they are on a planet, on a desert planet. And there's like different dimensions where people can go and explore and just have fun. And you'll notice that humans have a very specific area where they stay in and where ETs can go and explore in other areas that are safe for them. And this is very true. There are planets specifically just like Earth where you go into different abandoned buildings. Like if you're ever in paranormal research, um, there are certain points where energy pools and you can actually talk to people from the past or from the future in these certain points because of the energy flow or the dimensional energy flow. So this movie did a really good job depicting that, but you do need special gear or like special goggles or helmets to see these different dimensions or different areas where you go in this area. And it's really interesting that they taped it off to like know where the boundaries are. Um, a lot of planets don't have that, but it's kind of interesting that they did do that in the movie and show like entertainment, but it's very real. This technology where you can see into different dimensions or like see things in different dimensions of how to like work little gadget stuff, because a lot of people need to understand that certain technology that is used in the SSP cannot be used in a three dimensional sense but you also have to have different interdimensional or different components that connect to the technology in order to get it to work and this is a clear perfect example how you can mesh 
3D technology as well as interdimensional technology in order to interact with different beings from different um, dimensions or realities, which is which is very interesting that they kind of showcase that in the movie. So um, when we get into the movie, um, it starts to pan to go to the city mool. And in the beginning of the movie, when you're dealing with these two couples, especially the dude, um, he gets an image about this world the planet called mule and it centers around this young princess right here who is on the planet mule it's like a desert it's like a beach planet there are races that are like this but it's really interesting to showcase a planet planet like this now you will understand in the movie this is a clear example of a semiotic or a semiotic planet, meaning that they have a direct connection to the planet, to the animals, and they have a sort of like a central government structure. Maybe not like a, how do you want to say it? Not like the type of government structure that we see, but they have like a clan chief or like a king and queen that kind of like rules over their people. Um, that's very true. Um, so this would be a clear example of what a semiotic or a semio planet would be. And you can see in the movie that um, something really devastating happened. And this clearly shows a what a popocalyptic event. Like when ETs think of popocalyptic event, this is what they mean. Like a entire mothership crash lands into a planet and basically destroys it or you have war breaking out but in the movie there was a war that broke out and a mothership like you can see in the movie destroys the planet mule now what they got wrong in the movie is that there are certain galactic court systems or district court systems or interplanetary court system would essentially would intervene in these two conflicting planets or conflicting races to or to prevent this type of destruction from happening. So a lot of people may not believe this, but there are certain intergalactic or intergalactic laws or interplanetary laws where they would try to stop this type of event from occurring on the planet. This is the reason why we have the prime directive or the laws like this in order to prevent this type of destruction from happening. This is the reason why you don't hear a whole lot of reports or the reason why a lot of ETs just don't come here is because of intergalactic or galactic court systems that are in certain districts of the entire galaxy. Um, in the movie, they don't show that because it's like a, they don't show that in the movie. But you can clearly see that this is like a popolytic event, like a huge event where you're forcing a semiotic planet or forcing a, I guess, underdeveloped planet to force themselves to adapt to technology when they really haven't been using technology for who knows how long. Um, this is very true. It's very rare now, but it used to happen a lot back in the day, but this was very rare where you would have a civilization like Mule that would be forced to adapt to technology and live off to technology. Um, some cases, like in the movie, that this race survived, luckily survived, but other times if a race cannot adapt to technology, they would just basically die out. But they have managed to adapt to technology, which is really interesting. But what is really interesting is that they took a space shuttle from this ship and turned it into like a spaceship to order to make them live. They created their own garden, their own food system for this stuff. And it's 
very rare for a species that has never used technology for who knows how long to learn to adapt technology. And you can see in the movie, this race has learned how to use technology. Like they have found books or found stuff in the ship in order to help them fix up the ships or to allow them to, to survive. But this stuff does happen. It used to happen a lot frequency during the draconian wars but it doesn't happen as much as often but you would never see a ship to this point or extent to destroy a planet without interplanetary or planetary court systems stepping in and stopping this type of destruction from occurring or happening to a planet but this is what a lot of races think of when they think apocalyptic events um, nowadays, but I understand that as the human race, we have different concepts of what apocalyptical events, but, but I can't tell you how many times this has happened to planets across the entire Milky Way galaxy during the, during the Anunnaki and Galactic Wars, where you had had races that have never, ever been exposed to technology but have been forced to adapt to technology but um it's a very interesting storyline it does happen so one of the other things that is kind of like interesting in the movie is the spacesuits as you can see um, I would I would I would say that um, the spacesuits would mostly represent the spacesuits that you would see in the SSP. Um, not so much not so much here on Earth, but I would say this is the closest recommendation of the spacesuits from the SSP. Now, I do know that there's different versions of the spacesuits that you would see in different sci-fi movies. But I don't know what type of generation of suits this would be. I don't know if people in the SSP remembers that there's different generations of suits and different components. Um, I would say that the suits or the military is sort of similar to the suits that you would see in the SSP, like from the Nazis and stuff. But it wouldn't surprise me if this movie is somewhat related to the SSP and trying to tell a story of like one of the scenarios that happened in the SSP. But it's kind of interesting to gauge your guys' thoughts on that. Um, what is really interesting is that this race, when you get towards the end of the movie, um, you'll see that they have been taken over or been interrogated by the humans on the race. There's many different races. There's a lot of different funny events that happen. But towards the end of the movie, you can see that this race has been trying to take certain things from the, the city of Valerian and trying to create their own little mothership or their own little mothership where they can live on. And this is very true where you would have different hitchhiker races that would try to steal things from different races or to create their own little mothership or little hub. But this race is wants to build their own mothership and reform their entire planet. And there's a lot of races during the Draconian and Anunnaki War that did that a lot, where they would try to just build their own little mothership and just live on the resources because their home planet was taken over or destroyed during war. Um, what is really interesting is that when you get towards the end of the movie, you can see that they blast off in a gold ship. Um, I have actually seen a version of that gold ship, which is kind of interesting that they put this in the movie. So I'm wondering if this movie has some sort of connection to my storyline or trying to like tell a storyline of a cousin race that is similar to the Ginny Boo race. But it's very interesting because they showcase a golden ship. And the golden ship that I refer to to my video series 
is known as the scimitar and it's also known as the golden jet golden sword of justice because the ship can literally um metamorph or change into like a sword that can actually ram into warships um it used to be a warrior class ship but they kind of turned it into like a exploratory ship but um it's kind of interesting when you get towards the end of the movie and get to like the whole understanding, like it kind of turns into a love story when you get to these two right here. Um, they kind of go back and forth with each other. Um, in the movie, she ends up putting a jellyfish on top of her head to order to like re to order to like get back her um memories and stuff. Um there are jellyfish that do do that, that can record things. But I think it is also a way to, like, showcase showcase different ET races that live in the ocean or live in these different habitats. Like, people need to understand that when they created this base to adapt to other alien life there had to been a like a lot of engineering work and a lot of other stuff to order to get it to work properly and get these other races to work properly because um if you have different components within the ship that like for an example you have a race that can only live on fresh water and you have a race that can only live on salt water well, you need to find a way to engineer it to where those two different water systems or two different races don't interact and cause issues with each other because they can be poisonous or deadly towards each other. But it's it's a really good movie. Like, I understand that it might not be appealing to some people who are very um, into it or may not like the storyline because the two can be quite annoying. But if you... Um, not look at the movie of those two couples, but look at the, like the backdrop of the movie. You'll start to ex start to explore that there are certain elements. It wouldn't surprise me that this city is like showcasing some of the bases or the colony bases out in the SSP. But I would have to see what other people from the SSP think about that if they have watched the movie and see what they think but um let me know what you guys think do you guys have any questions did i leave anything out um i wasn't really expecting this to be like a short live stream but um what do you guys think have you guys watched the movie did you guys like the movie um i liked the movie when i went to go watch it in the movie theater um a couple of years ago when the movie first came out in the movie theater um i really like this movie even though that it might be a cheesy rom cheesy rom-com but um it is very interesting um but but um thank you for listening to my live stream and this movie review um let me know what you guys think about this movie review. I understand that this video is short, but um, did you guys enjoy? Did you guys like enjoy the movie? But one of the ways that I would classify the city of Valerian are the ETs part of the Galactic Federation. So you mean in the movie, John? Um, I would say from the way that it's portrayed in the movie, this would be like an interpretation of the Galactic Federation, but I wouldn't say these ETs are part of the Galactic Federation, um, due to the fact the movie is set up in a way to like showcase themselves, but due to the fact this is Earth space hub and they're like floating through the space, um, this would not be a true representation of how the Galactic Federation would introduce themselves to the planet. 
Um, usually the more proper way of introducing a species into the Galactic Federation is through the interplanetary court system near Saturn and Jupiter. And so essentially what they would do is that they would allow the human race to develop their own human council. Um, I don't believe that the humans on this planet have a human council. I do know that they have an ambassadory program, but um, how the Galactic Federation would adapt or would allow races to become part of the Galactic Federation is number one, is that they would physically come to the planet and have a worldwide broadcast of all the different ETs or on all the different um, ETs to come and protest themselves on a public stage. And that is how they would present themselves to the public. Um, with the human council, you have to understand that they are the ones to dictate who can become allies to humanity and who cannot, and who are not allies in the movie. But once they become formally adapted to the Galactic Federation and follow their laws, then you would have a lot of ET races that would want to work with work with them. But this is the point of humanity where they have united because in the beginning of the movie, you can showcase or see that um, different nationalities of the planet or different nationalities of humans have come together and built this spaceport, which is what they want to see. But once they, I guess, get out of their hostile label of Earth and move into a more docile sort of civilization, you would see a lot more ET races that would show up in public that tried to introduce themselves. But as formally, if they a race wants to formally adapt to the Galactic Federation, they would have to be serious changes. Like for an example, um, one of the things that they would want to see for Earth is a planetary defense system meaning that they would want a fraction of the military that is the de designatedly designed to protect their Earth, to protect the planet, not just from spaceships, but from other asteroids or other debris from space. And we don't have that. Um, what is really interesting about this movie is that they actually show the space station with artificial gravity. And I'm kind of surprised that they invested so much money into NASA that they still have not figured out artificial gravity. Like in one of the ways that could catapult people or catapult the human race into the space age, if they could figure out artificial gravity, because that would be a huge game changer. But I'm just kind of surprised. But would this be an accurate representation of the Galactic Federation? No. It would not be. This would be a private meeting between private ET races between the human race. But formally, if you want a true representation of the Galactic Federation, there would be a lot of court meetings, like a lot of public meetings between ET races, um, not only by government, but by the world government as well. And they would broadcast different meetings with different ETs from around the world and they would educate the public about different ET races. That is what would be a true representation of the Galactic Federation. If you guys ever watched Star Trek and watched how Star Trek started to become part of the um, Starfleet or the International Starfleet, that would be a true representation of the Galactic Federation if you start um, watching Star Trek, like the beginning of Star Trek and how they met um, the Vulcans and the Vulcans kind of like introduced them to the Galactic Federation and they started having meetings and having formal meetings between each races, not just privatized meetings like this that you see in the movie. It would be more on a public stage. It would be broadcasted to the general public, just like a regular news station would be. Um, and I don't think the human race has come to that point of time where they should actually start broadcasting or educating public about different ET races. 
if the human race wants to become part of the galactic citizen, there's going to be a point of time where the world governments or different government entities is going to have to start releasing information, not just like documents like under the table and just like tell people that the information's there, but to actually have a public broadcast of ETs showcasing themselves and talking to the public is what a lot of ETs want is not only the world government to take take in charge, but this would be a definition of what a lot of star seeds call as first contact, where you would have a lot of ET races that would introduce themselves and try to get the human race to come to the Galactic Federation as in a proper and formal way. Hopefully that explains it. John, hopefully that I hopefully I explained that well enough for you, John. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Are there any currently many biospheres that are near Earth with a great, great variety of ETs in them? Yes, actually, yes. Um, there are ETs like you have Mars. Um, I do know from talking to other psychics, um, there are a lot of people who call the planet near Nibiru. It's not actually called Nibiru. It's actually called Mobius and is in an optolytical orbit around Earth or around the sun. Um, those have... Um, different ET races. I do know that NASA just announced that there was a planet that they saw city lights on. I wouldn't know if that would be a colony race from the human race. Um, there are other planets, I would have to say about five light years away from us, that do have life on it, similar to us. Um, but they just have not developed the type of communication or advanced communication systems like we have here on Earth. But yes, if you want to actually see an entire civilization of other ET races that are, are a little bit more advanced, they're in the range of 20 to 30 light years away from Earth, meaning like 20 to 30 million miles away from earth or a billion miles away from earth but yes there are other races that are similar to earth in nature it's just that um they usually don't want a hostile race like earth knowing the location of these different et races especially the ssp um because the ssp has known to be very destructive and I do know that they have taken over Mars, and the natives of Mars are not very happy. Um, but that's just my opinion. I think that the SSP should really leave Mars alone, because Mars is our cousin race. And if we do things correctly, they could be a very good ally towards the human race. A very good ally. But due to the fact that we treat them like shit on some of the colony bases that I have been to and heard from other SSP assets, um, it wouldn't surprise me that they end up becoming a confrontational friend. A confrontational. They wouldn't necessarily attack us because they can't really, they don't really have the technology to do that and they don't really want to do that, but they would probably cause the disputes if we ever did become part of the Galactic Federation um, or if they tried to petition more restrictions on Earth, which I do know that they have done that in the past, is that they have been petitioning a lot more restrictions on the SSP. Um, is there any other questions that other people have or any other questions that people want? Um, thank you so much for tuning in to this live stream. Um, if you guys want to donate or support, or if you have any questions, um, the donation links are below. Um, leave a comment. I would love to answer your guys' questions. Um, but let me know if you guys have any more questions or want me to talk about anything else.
Does anybody else have any other questions that they want to ask about the movie or questions in general that are related to some of the topics that I talk about? Um, does anybody else have any questions that they want to ask or um, talk about that are related to any of my YouTube videos that anybody has? Um, does anybody have any recommendations of other movie reviews that you guys want me to talk about? The ETs won't contact humans because they can read about Akasic records and they don't want to intervene. Um, yes, that's very true. They can access Akasic records and they can actually understand human behavior through the Akasic records. And because of that, um, yeah, you're right about that. I have a question about a solar storm heading towards Earth, but I'm finding it trying to find the article. So do you mean the solar storm from the sun or do you mean from a star that ha has exploded from a nearby solar system like a couple of light years away? So nothing to, I would love a movie review on Logan's run from the seventies. Haven't seen this film, but enjoy reviewing it. I would love to watch that movie and do a movie review and let you guys know and try to find videos, but thank you for the recommendation. Um, I will probably end up watching that movie over the weekend and try to do a schedule, another live stream. I should have a, another live stream interview I'm starting to do live streams. I don't know if you guys saw the live stream video, but I'm starting to do a lot more live streams. I do have a live stream that is scheduled for this Friday at noon. So it's kind of nice. So yeah, from an exploding star. So if it's a solar storm, so if it's exploding star from a nearby solar system, um, chances are the debris, debris would reach Earth, but I don't think it would be that bad to the point where it start affecting the environment on Earth. I do know that it would probably affect the animals on the planet, like they might be acting a lot more strange. When animals start to act strange in the wild, it's usually due to a lot of environmental factors, but it can also be celestial factors, meaning like the planet, earthquakes and stuff. Um, but um, would the solar storm affect Earth? No. There would be plans in place. Like you have to understand that a lot of ETs have figured out when that star would explode. So there would be precautions of other races that would go to that area to either evacuate other races, which is probably going, which is probably happening right now. And those races would either get another sanctuary planet or a spaceport where they would be transferred to. But um, usually what would happen during the explosion of a star would be, number one, they would know when exactly when it was going to happen. They would plan out evacuation plan for the races that are in that solar system. And they would evacuate any other races that are in the proximity of that year where that star is and let people know. Or they would put up planetary shields around different planets. But yeah. So someone wants me to do a movie review on player one. Um, I have actually watched that movie yesterday. So I might actually do a movie review 
on that tomorrow if I can get a slide up and ready and do another live stream either tomorrow and talk about it if I can get another live sh- get another presentation done tonight. But I have actually watched Player One, and I would have to say that it's very interesting, and there's a lot to talk about in, about that movie. Um, I do believe that it's set in an alternate reality similar to Earth, but do I see that happening on Earth? No. Due to the social thing, but I also do believe that a lot of religious people would stop that from happening on this planet, in my opinion. Um... Does anybody else have any other questions? But I have two movies. Is there any, I should be, I'm almost done reading, doing, listening to an audio book that someone sent me. So I'm hoping to do a um, book review on that one and talk about the different concepts about that book and do a little presentation about that. But um, it's kind of interesting, but it's kind of like an interesting audio book. Um, so that would be in like an interesting book review. But does anybody else have any other questions that they want to ask about the movie review, or if you guys have any other movie um, movies um, that you guys want me to do? Is there like any TV shows that you guys want me to do? In, do a TV show review on the different seasons or the different episodes because I need some TV show recommendations. There's some. Um, I guess canceled TV shows that I have found on Amazon Prime that have been canceled. That would be pretty interesting to do on the canceled one. The man who fell to earth is pretty interesting. The new one, even the old one with David Bowie. So someone told me to do a The Man Who Fell From Earth, the new one and the old one. I didn't even know there was a new one, old one. But yeah, I will definitely do a movie review on that and talk about that. Um, I would have to watch that movie. Um, let me let me write that down a minute. Oh, I don't have a pen. But yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely love to do another movie review on that. I don't know what you guys want me to do. You guys want me to do Logan Run first? player one first or which one do you guys guys would listen to the most um just to let people know who are tuning in um my donation links um are in the stress rooms below yes you did send the book Yes, you did send that book. I am almost done finished reading it or listening to the audio book of it, and I should be able to do a book review soon on it, pretty soon. So that would be kind of like an interesting thing to do a book review on it. So Ron is saying is marijuana is marijuana on other planets. Yes, there's different varieties of marijuana on other planets. Marijuana was given to humanity to be as a healing agent. There are other marijuana plants that are used for other ET races that are used for healing, but I do believe that marijuana was genetically engineered or bioengineered to be eatable and adaptable to humans. But yes, there is many different versions of it. There's also many different versions of, it's called a universal healing plant, meaning that marijuana can be used for many different things for medicinal medicinal uses for healing. But yes, there are plants like that that are you know used as universal healing. And there's different versions of it on other planets. Well, do you have a bright future in the entertainment industry because you have so much knowledge? 
Um, probably, yeah. Um, if I get noticed by people or get noticed. But yeah, I know a lot. Um, I actually started keeping a video camera in my car um, because I have seen so many UFOs on the highway driving to and from work or driving to my parents' house to get stuff um, that has become so common, so normal. And I'm so surprised that a lot of people in my area don't video record it. But I have seen like three motherships on on my way to my new house, like getting stuff into my new house over the past couple of weeks. So I have started putting a video camera, but due to the fact that I'm driving on the highway, there isn't a really good place to pull over and start video recording them on the highway. So I'm hoping that they'll show up on the highway near a gas station where I can pull over into the gas station and start recording. But yeah, I would think so. I'm hoping to get my book published to get noticed a little bit more. Um, but um, I would think so. I just haven't been noticed yet. I don't have that audience yet or the social media platform aud audience yet. But I would think so. Orphan Black is cool, too, with a lot of super soldier cloning and experience experimenting in the new one and the old one the old one has the hawk actress okay um yeah i would like to watch that too i haven't seen that one but i will definitely like to watch that one um waiting for your book thank you john i appreciate it um i'm on chapter four let me see if i can um Oh, I don't have it downloaded, but I'm on chapter four right now. Um, school should be done like the last week, like exam week is coming up. So I don't really have a whole lot of time to like edit the book right now or add more parts to it because exam week is coming up. But once school's done towards the end of April, I should be like writing writing and editing the book almost every day or spending the vast majority of every day writing the book. But I, once I get to the point, I'll probably ask people who want to edit the book or get people's general opinion about it. Um, let me see. Let me take a quick moment and let me see if I can download it a minute. For you guys to see. Let me see if I can download it. Okay. So let me remove this from my studio. And let me see if I can add Oh, there it is. Yay. I'm waiting for it to download. I finally downloaded the book. I can present it. So this, I don't know if you guys can see, but this is the book I downloaded in PDF. But I got the author's note. There's about like 40 pages. I have the introduction part written. Um, this is my first chapter, which is like the creation of the central government system, like how the central government 
like the central government structure of galactic government is created. And then chapter two is classification of species, which I'm in the process of editing. Um, and then chapter three, where is it? Chapter two. Chapter three is category trait of species. Um, that is one of my videos about understanding different species. And then um, like traits, meaning like the different levels or the different rankings that I was talking about in one of my um, videos. And then um, category four is category of species, like when I start helping people to identify different species. So that's what I have written so far. Um, according to this PDF, I have about 45 pages written so far for my book. So um, I'm hoping to get close to over close to 300 pages written. But um, yeah um i just i thought i'd just let show people how much i've written so far for the book but yeah i'm hoping to get it done and published soon um and get edited pretty soon to let people know so the man who fell from earth is about quantum fusion but humans call it cold fusion i think they would find it interesting um, yeah, it is called quantum fusion. Um, the reason why it's called quantum fusion, because if I'm correct, um, if I'm correct, um, from what I have heard is that if they take the nuclear waste and put it in the fusion reactor that they have can actually power generate the quantum fusion that's what i've heard i don't know if that's true but um we don't really need a quantum fusion if we can start learning how to use zero point energy from the alpha, from the alpha system that kim has but so far um it'll be kind of interesting to see where that goes um, thank you, John. Yeah, I just thought I would go ahead and like show people how much I've written so far for the book um, and do some editing. I already have the name and the book cover designed, um, made, but I don't know if you guys want me to um, um, give out the name of my book pretty soon, but um, hopefully I can get it up. What I originally want for my book is that I want a hard copy, a paperback, audio book, as well as an ebook for people. Because some people, like for me, sometimes I like hardcover or soft cover, but it'll be kind of interesting. Yeah, there is a lot of movies. Um, I've I have heard that Scanners from the nineteen, I think sixties or seventies, is a recommend is a true depiction of people with advanced telepathic abilities that were used for military use. I don't know if anybody has heard that movie before. Um, Soylent Green. Um, I would have to say that that is an alternate reality of Earth. The solar, solar green happen or they take their own race and start turning them into food. Yes, it's very true, especially with different reptilian races. Um, reptilian race, certain reptilian races that I have known have actually learned how to eat their own kind for food. So, 
the pending and not like humans in general, but for other ET races, yes, that movie is a reality and actually true. Um, does anybody else have any other questions that they want to ask? Um, just to let people know the donation links, if you guys want to help support me, are in the description for this video or in my previous video. But um, I just want to say thank you so much, guys, for supporting me, um, being interested in my work and my book. Um, but, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited. Um, I'm hoping over the summer that I can start recording um, UFOs returning from winter because I do know that they migrate. So I'm hoping that in the near future over the summer that I can actually start re video recording um, UFOs returning and publish them to my video. But um, thank you so much, guys, for, for you guys' support. Um, thank you so much for being interested in my contact. I would really appreciate it if you guys can't donate, but I would really appreciate it if you guys could like, share on, on my videos, or at least get my videos out there on other social media platforms from you guys' own social media accounts. But I just want to say thank you. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. But um, if, in any, if no one else has any other questions, I'm going to close the live stream in a couple of minutes. Well, thank you guys for your support. I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. If you guys want to support me, donations links is on, donation links are in the bottom. Um, but please, if you're new, subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out my videos, comment on them, like them, share them. But thank you so much for you guys' support.